Hey everybody, Smite Pants Chess here, and because this Berlin opening has been so popular in recent videos, I decided to check out another one. Again, it's Stockfish 8, playing white with Alpha Zero, playing black, again in the year 2018. So we're going to look at it from Alpha Zero's perspective again, it's slightly different this time. Stockfish began with e4 in this game, Alpha Zero played e5, knight to f3, knight c6, bishop b5, and knight to f6, as we see, a Berlin. Castles from white, knight takes e4, and recently we looked at games where white goes d4, knight d6, takes, 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 and then knight to f5, and there's a trade of queens, and usually Alpha Zero starts putting the bishop onto e7 in this variation. However, in this game, instead of playing d4, Stockfish played the move rook e1, hitting the knight on e4, which jumps back to d6, and then knight takes e5 is played, knight takes e5, Rook takes and bishop to e7. So now black's hitting this bishop, which jumps back to f1. Black castles kingside. Stockfish plays d4. And Alpha nicely places their bishop onto f6, hitting the rook, forcing it backwards. And then black goes rook e8. Now I think it'd be a waste of a tempo if white just plays rook takes e8, although it is certainly playable in this position. Instead though, Stockfish played c3, supporting their d4 pawn. And Alpha Zero captured on e1, Queen takes e1 was played, and Alpha Zero played knight to e8. I'm going to reroute that knight somewhere else. Um, I'm probably going to push this pawn up to release the bishop on this diagonal. So bishop f4 now, d5. Um, and maybe white should play bishop d3 here to cover this f5 square, although still black could get their bishop into f5, which is the main idea in this position. For instance, black can continue with g6, and if knight d2, knight g7, queen e2, c6, rook e1, and now play bishop f5, the knight on g7 supports it. And if there's a trade, this isn't too bad for black, it's actually pretty even for both sides. And let's say knight g7, bishop e5, knight e6, both sides uh, are doing quite well. Obviously white may have a slight edge due to the doubled uh, rook and queen on the e-file, but still black's very much equalised out the opening. So going back, I recommend bishop d3 for white. However, Stockfish played knight to d2. Now the point is now black is free just to put their bishop on f5 straight away and gain uh, the white squares on this diagonal. Still though, it's not too bad for white. They go queen e3. They could play bishop d3 next. Knight d6 is played supporting the bishop. Knight to f3. And Alpzero gains some space with the move a5, <clears throat> limiting uh, Stockfish from playing b4. Stockfish doubles on the e-file. Alpha Zero consolidates with c6. a4 is played to stop any b5s uh, from black and getting any more space on this side of the board. Uh, and now h6, giving the king some space. Maybe preparing to play g5 or even putting their bishop back to h7. Certainly a plan. And now queen c1. Bishop e7, b3, knight to e8, and queen to e3. So there's a lot of shuffling going on. Bishop to f8, bishop to d3. And now queen to f6, followed by knight to e5 from Stockfish with knight d6. If white captures on f5, then black can recapture. After h3, maybe queen c2. It looks as though black may gain some slight advantage. So attacking this b3 pawn. However, white could go knight d7. Rook e8 is interesting though. And after queen d2, takes, takes. Knight e4, takes on f8, king takes, and c4. Um, and g5, bishop c7. This game is actually given as equal. However, it looks as though maybe black maybe have a slight edge. Of course, they can take on b3 if they wish, but then, of course, white may be able to hoover up the a5 pawn. Uh, but it's actually quite interesting. Okay, so going back to this variation, Stockfish didn't take on f5. Instead, they played f3. But alpha 0 did now take the bishop. Bishop takes d3, knight takes d3. And now they play h5. So this stops g4, but this is like what Leela and Alpha Zero do. They just start launching this h-pawn down the board, as we'll see later in the game. Queen d2 is played. b5, getting more space. Queen d1. Rook c8 from Alpha Zero. Bishop e5, hitting the queen. Queen g5. Bishop to f4. So there's a lot of back and forth here by Stockfish and Alpha Zero. Just chasing this queen around the board, and then there comes rook to e5. The queen retreats again. Knight c5. And this all looks very pleasant for white at the moment, to be honest. 
However, Black's actually got um, a slight advantage here because now they play B takes A4. The point now is that if B takes A4, Black gets a comfortable square for the knight with knight C4, hitting the rook. If the rook retreats backwards, they can play moves like queen F5, and if bishop G3, Black's basically got more space now. Uh, still an equal game, but it could be argued that maybe Black has more space. Um, maybe even possible to even double the C pawns hit by bishop takes C5. Okay, so back to the game though. If knight takes A4 was played instead, F6 to hit the rook. The rook retreats backwards. And again we see Alpha Zero launch this H pawn up the board, preparing H3. However, Stockfish stops this with H3 themselves. Queen F5 is played though to hit the bishop, which retreats backwards. Uh, knight to F7. Bishop to F2, hitting the pawn. And now Bishop to D6. Maybe thinking why Stockfish doesn't now just take this pawn then. Bishop takes H4, looks really good. But Black has some tricks with Queen F4, attacking the Bishop. Bishop F2 is the only square. And Black can play check, King F1, and then Queen to H1 with check. If King to E2 here, then Queen takes G2, which is really good for Black. Um, Bishop G1 to block. Black can play Bishop G3, hitting the Rook. Um, and it's actually quite an interesting position, because let's say White goes Knight C5. Bishop takes e1 is not necessarily good after queen takes e1 because the queen actually is trapped on h1 for black. So if knight c5, uh, the computers recommend playing knight d6 here. After knight d3, maneuver this knight in with knight to f5. And if queen to e2, play this cheapo. Bishop e5, threaten to play knight to g3 check, which will fork the king, oops, sorry, king and the queen, not the rook. And if king f2 in this position, bishop g3 again, king f1, and now knight h4. With the bishop attacking the rook, and the knight and queen converging on g2. If queen e6 check, king h7, rook e2, bishop h2 is given. And after king e1, queen takes the bishop, king to d2 and rook c7 is given as better for black in this variation. So after all that... Bishop takes h4 doesn't look too appealing here. So instead Stockfish obviously calculated this variation and played knight to b2. But this allows now Alpha Zero to gain an advantage. Bishop g3. As we'll see after knight d3, knight d6. Finally Stockfish takes on g3. And after h takes g, this pawn is an absolute annoyance for white now. Covers these two important squares, and basically the king is trapped in these current squares at this moment in time. And as we'll see in the next sort of 100 moves or so, yeah, it's a long game. Um, we'll see just how Alpha Zero exploits this. So knight c5, queen g5, and actually I'm going to speed through this because there's a lot of shuffling from both sides here. With back and forth movements from the queen, the knight, and the rooks. So there's not, really, there's not really much to learn from these moves, so I'm just going to speed through really quickly. I don't want to waste your time. And after several manoeuvres, finally after rook b7, Stockfish now changes the structure of the position with f4, attacking the queen. And the queen obviously moves to h5. Stockfish now plays knight c5, hitting the rook. Rook b8, king f1, king h7. Rook e6, and we get into an interesting position now. So the rook's attacking c6, uh, but also importantly, the rook's guarding this e3 square. So the rook actually can't take on c6 yet, because otherwise the knight will jump in, fork the king and the queen. So queen g6 is played, and now there is actually a real threat from black to play knight to e3 with discovered attack against white's queen here. So queen d1 is played, but again, queen d1. The knight can still jump in to this square if the rook ever moves. Uh, so for this reason now, Alpha Zero strikes and plays a4, uh, which is a very interesting move. This is because if b takes a4, it sets up a trap. Knight to e3 check. If the rook takes, then there's rook to b1, winning white's queen. So a4 forces white to take with the knight. And now comes queen f7, attacking the rook, which goes back to e1. There's a king h6, king g1. And now queen to a7. White packs their king in the corner. Black plays g6. Again, king to g1. 
But now importantly, this position actually demonstrates the weaknesses in white's position because after queen c7, there's no real way to defend this f4 pawn. Because if rook f1 to protect, knight to e3 will come, attacking the queen and the rook. And if queen to d2, then rook takes b3 can be played. So in this position, white is still actually a pawn up, but black's going to win it back next move. So knight c5 is played, and now black wins the pawn back. Queen takes f4, knight to d3 attacking the queen, queen g5, rook e6, and rook to b7. If white ever moves this rook off e-file, I think queen to e3 is just suicide for white, and black will gain a great position. Queen c2 is played instead, but now alpha zero shows the weaknesses once again in white's position. Rook a7, threatening to play rook a1, check, uh, with devastating consequences. And again we see the power of this pawn limits the king to the first rank. Queen b2 stops any rook a1 ideas. King h7 is played, rook e2, and now knight to d6. And the point is now after rook e1, alpha zero can play knight to e4, and suddenly their piece is in a dominating position. Stockfish plays knight to b4, but alpha zero plays rook to b7. And again we get into interesting position, because if white chases this pawn with knight takes c6, queen f4 just wins for black, threatens to play queen to f2 with check, King h1, knight to f2, king g1, and now knight to d3, attacking the queen and the rook. And if rook f1, queen e3 check, and black will take the queen on the next move. So in the game, Stockfish played knight to d3 instead, protecting this f2 square. King h6 from alpha 0, rook e2, king g7, a bit of a shuffling going on. But finally, after rook e1, Queen d2 is played by alpha 0, forcing the trade of queens basically, because the queen is attacking this knight, this rook, and the queen at the same time. So there's a trade of queens, but after knight c5, attacking the rook, rook a7, suddenly Stockfish is basically in Zugzwang here, because they can never move the rook off the first rank, because then rook a1 check will be played. The pawn on g3 stops the king from moving into the second rank, and the knight on d2 stops the king moving into f1. And if, let's say, rook to e2, then here black can just play rook a1 with check, so that's impossible. Uh, and if, let's say, rook to d1 here, this isn't actually a threat at all, because even if the rook takes this knight, then rook a1 will be played again with checkmate. So in this position I looked at knight to d3, I thought this was probably the only move, but then just comes rook a3, hitting this b3 pawn. If knight c1 to protect, black can play rook a1, knight d3, rook a3 again, knight c1. Now play g5, knight to e2, knight to e4, king f1 and rook takes b3. Um, and suddenly black's actually a pawn up. After rook c1 they can just start pushing up the king side pawns on the F and G file, and black's got a very nice position. Now I looked at some other moves because now Stockfish just played C4 and gave up a pawn. So D takes C4, takes and takes, and all of a sudden black is just a full pawn up. Um, and after knight to E4, attacking G3, rook A3 protects it. Rook C1 hits the knight, knight B6, and now knight takes G3. Uh, giving up the knight for two pawns. So rook takes is played by alpha zero, rook takes c6, rook b3 protecting the knight, and now rook d6. And I'll play through the next moves quite fast because alpha zero just basically takes the time here. They've got a knight for the pawn, uh, and this should be easy win for the black side now. Uh, and eventually alpha zero wins the pawn on d4, and that's all she wrote in this game. Uh, but they take a while to do it. Eventually Stockfish does make a mistake which forces the king to the wrong square. I think we'll see it soon, actually. So around here, let's say king f4, king h1, king g3 here, rook c1. Yeah, it's here, king g3, rook to b4, and um, black's going to pick up the pawn after rook c2. Knight takes d4, check. King f8, rook a7, um, and then after a few more moves, Stockfish resigned the game here because um, black's just in a totally one position, just the whole piece up 
and it's just a matter of time until Alpha Zero takes advantage of this game. So again, it's hard to decipher what we actually learned from this game, but I think the most important idea here was the fact that Alpha Zero launched this H pawn up the board. And once this pawn got to G3, um, Black had some pleasant ideas coming up because it really put Stockfish in Zugzwang and forced him to the defensive. Again, we saw this open file completely dominate White and threaten Mate on the back rank, and this is ultimately what cost Stockfish the game. But anyway, Alpha Zero's play was once again very interesting, just stunting White's uh, development and growth in the game. And again, I recommend playing the Berlin. I'm certainly going to learn it further after I've seen some of these Alpha Zero games. And a very nice comment in my previous video was that maybe um, Alpha Zero doesn't play E4 because they're so afraid that they'll face the Berlin, which I think is true. But anyway, thank you for watching another video, and thank you all for commenting. If you ever need any analysis done on your games, or you want to submit one, I'll probably make a video out of it if anyone's interested. Just drop me a line in the comments, and I'll pick it up. It doesn't cost anything, and I think it'll be a lot of fun. I think it'll be a lot of fun to interact with you guys. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and see you in the next one. Goodbye for now.